Hey everyone, this is Nick Diabertis teaching you financial modeling. Today we're going to be talking about combining Excel and Python using Excel wings. This is part of our lecture segment on combining Excel and Python. So we already uh, explored how to use Pandas to do simpler integrations of Excel and Python. Now we're going to look at the full possible connection between the two using the Excel Wings library. So Excel Wings gives us a nice convenient way that we can use Excel from Python and use Python from Excel and go back and forth between the two. Uh, so you don't actually need to use Excel Wings. It's, it's built on top of uh, the Microsoft COM API. So that's an API that Microsoft releases so that other software can interact with Microsoft Office products. Um, but it's kind of a pain to use uh, directly in Python. I uh, was doing that myself before this Excel Wings library really became a thing. Uh, years back, I had to build out some code that uh, was, I was driving an Excel plugin from Python. I was basically using an Excel plugin to pull some data and then I would use Python to switch it out for different companies and keep rerunning the plugin, uh, relaunching Excel and, and all these things. Um, so that was all possible without Excel Wings, but uh, it sure would have been quite a bit easier had Excel Wings been uh, where it is today when I had built out that project. So it is still under active development, just like any of the um, third party packages that we use in the class. Um, and some parts of it are more stable than others. The part that we're going to look at and use in this course is very stable. Uh, I've never had any issues with it and neither have I heard any issues from anyone in the classes. Um, there are other ways to use it, which we'll talk about briefly. Um, and some of those are newer and less stable, but um, really interesting ways to integrate the two. But that things are moving quickly in this space. Every day there are improvements. Um, and so over time, I expect all these to become stable and well accepted ways of combining the two. So I keep saying there are different ways to use Excel wings and combine the two. So what are those different ways? So the uh, two main categories of ways that we can uh, integrate Excel and Python with Excel wings. The first here is manipulating Excel from Python. So that's writing Python code to make Excel do things. Um, and that is where we're going to focus in this course. Um, and we're even focusing on a subset of that. We're going to focus on just bringing data back and forth between Excel and Python. Um, and orchestrating that from Python. Um, but you can also use this integration to do absolutely anything that you would be able to do in Excel. Uh, you want to uh, you know, run, run a, create a data table or um, you know, make a pivot table or whatever. Anything that you can do in Excel you can do it from Python, execute some Python code, and Excel will respond in turn. Um, the other main way that we can combine the two is to run Python from Excel. So that's using Excel to orchestrate things and running Python code. And within that, we have two different categories here that are supported in the Excel Wings library. So one is Python as a VBA replacement, and the other is user-defined functions. So Python as a VBA replacement, that means you, know, you have an Excel model and you've hit the limits of what you're able to do with base Excel. You're thinking, okay, I've got to write some VBA code to accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish. Well, this lets you write Python code instead and just use that 
in place of using VBA for whatever you were going to do. Um, so it basically gives you a VBA function run Python, which uh, then will run Python code in the background. Uh, the other main way of running Python from Excel is using user-defined functions. And with user-defined functions, uh, you basically create a function in Python and you're able to call it from Excel. So just like you have you know, equals average in Excel, you can now have equals my function and that my function is defined in Python code and it runs Python code. It'll take the inputs from Excel, run it through the Python code, and then it will return whatever you're returning. It will take that and bring it back into Excel and put the result in the cell. So really cool way of combining the two. And I think that um, can really give you the most power. Um, but those user-defined functions are where uh, there's still a lot of active development going on. There's still um, some bugs that they're working through with them. And um, it's uh, something that, you know, I think a couple years down the road, they're going to be a lot more widespread, but it's still kind of the early days for the user to find functions. Um, so lots of cool applications there. Um, but we're just going to be focusing in this course on bringing data back and forth between Excel and Python because that is going to cover the vast majority of use cases for combining the two. Um, and I would encourage you to Google Excel Wings documentation and you can take a look at the other approaches and give them a try on your own as well. So... Um, the main integration that we're using in this course is that we can take uh, values, numbers, or data frames that we list, numbers, data frames, strings, uh, that we have in Python, and we can bring those into Excel. And we can take data which we have in Excel, you know, individual cells or whole tables, columns, rows, we can take that and we can bring it into Python as lists or individual values or data frames. Um, so we'll also just briefly touch on, uh, you know, one bit of functionality that we'll use, which um, the VBA API that we have in Python. Um, so this means that you can do anything in Excel from your Python code. And we'll, we'll just look at recalculating the workbook as the one application here. But you can expand that to any possible thing that you can do in Excel. You can make your Python code trigger that in Excel. Um, and we'll look at how we can work with entire tables at once for convenience. So here's a quick example of reading and writing values. Um, to and from Excel. So first, um, we have reading values from Excel into Python, and all of this is gonna be Python code because we're talking about doing all this from the Python side. Uh, doing things from the Excel side would be the other uh, way of integrating the two. And so here, looking at reading values from Excel, here's the simplest example. Um, so we'll talk about this, this sheet object in the full Jupyter Notebook example, we'll, we'll see how we get that, but just assume you have that already. Then it's just dot range, and you give it whatever cell range you want to get, and then dot value, and that's going to get the value from that cell in Excel. Um, and then you can save that into a variable, just like you can with any other expression. Um, and if you... Um, give it a, a range, you know, just like you would type that range in Excel with the colon and, and the cells on each side, then it will give you um, all the values which exist in that range. And in the Jupyter Notebook example, we'll look at the format we get those back in. Um, and we it also has a nice shortcut, this expand function, which basically says, you know, start from G11 and then go right and go down 
until you reach the end of the table. So that lets you just take the top left cell of a table and grab the entire table using expand. Uh, and then looking at writing values, we have numbers in Python. We want to bring them into Excel. Um, so then it's just taking this expression and, and flipping it. So same thing that we did to pull the value from Excel. Now we have that on the left-hand side of the equals. We're assigning to it. Um, and we just assign whatever value, and that's going to come into Excel. And if we give it a... Um, list then it's going to put multiple values in multiple cells so 10 would go in g11 and then 11 would go in h11 it would go horizontally uh, to the next column and then if you specify that range as a vertical range then that will make that same uh, so same values go vertically g11 and g12 will have those values and then if you already have a data frame it's already set up to work very nicely with data frames. And so you can just assign a data frame into a cell and then it's going to put the entire table there expanding outward from that cell. So that's the basic idea. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the full example in the Jupyter Notebook. Um, so in addition to importing pandas, we're gonna need to work with data frames. Now we also import Excel wings and there's one of these conventions here for Excel wings as well. People typically import Excel wings as XW. Um, so what we didn't show in that example is how you initially get connected to the workbook and the worksheet. So now we're gonna look at that. Um, so now that we have XW, we can do XW.book to get a workbook and you give it the name of the workbook or the full file path if it's in a different folder. And if you don't already have the workbook open, it's automatically going to open it for you. Um, so I can see now that opened example workbook for me. And um, this is the example workbook that we're working with. So I'm just gonna put that over there so we can see uh, what's going on. Um, in the Excel as well as the Python. So we look at that book object. It's a book object. And we can see the name of the workbook. Um, and that's an Excel wings book object. Um, so now we're connected to the workbook. We want to connect to the worksheet. Um, so if you do book doc sheets, you can see uh, the sheets which are in there here, example workbook has sheet one. Um, and you can, uh, a, a neat way that they've set up uh, these sheets and, and book objects in uh, Excel Wings is that they kind of work both like lists and like dictionaries. You can access it either way. Um, so if you give it a numerical index, then it's going to. Um, pull it out by the order. So here, this is gonna get the first worksheet from the workbook. So now we have that sheet one worksheet, or you can look it up by the name like you would with a dictionary. Um, and that will also get us to sheet one. And this is a sheet object that we have here. Um, so you know, typically you're just gonna have those two things together. Um, you would get the workbook and then you would get the sheet from the workbook and then everything else you would just work with the sheet. So let's see what we can do with this. So we can see we have this something over here in A1. And if we look up from A1 uh, in that sheet, we wanna get the value, that's going to give us that something right there. Um, and just to prove that's working, we can move over to A2. Um, and that's getting nothing, right? Because there's nothing in that cell. Uh, but we can look at B1, and that's going to get else. So we are indeed pulling values from that Excel workbook. And when we pull from a cell which has no value, we're going to get none as a result. So we can see that what we're getting is none. That is indeed true. The C1 has no value. 
So that's reading a single value. Now we can write a single value. So we're going to write into A2 now. We want to take the value of 10 and write it in there. And we run this and we can see that has now showed up in the Excel workbook. So pretty neat to see all that happening live. Um, and then we can read multiple values at once. So we can give a range of cells here, A1 to A2. And we want to get that value, and that's going to get us those values in a list. First something, and then the 10. Um, and we can target this A1 to B1 instead, and we'll get something else. Uh, each of those coming as an item in the list. Now, it does get a little bit more complicated when we want to do a two-dimensional range. So here, A1 to B2, that's uh, getting all four of these cells. So the way that Excel Wings is going to represent that by default is with a list of lists. So within this outer list, we have lists, and each one of these lists is representative of a row. Um, so we can see the first row, something else, and then we can see the second row, 10, and then a blank cell, so none. Um, and it can be a little bit complicated to work with that, and the creators of Excel Wings realize this. So um, we can also pass options to this, and we can pass the option that we would like to get a data frame with the result instead of a list of lists. So if we just do the same thing, but put this options data frame before the value, now you can see it comes as a data frame. Uh, but there is uh, something weird here that um, we have else here as the name of a column. And then we have something as the name of the index. And then we have 10 as a value of the index. And we have a single cell data frame which has none in it. So maybe not quite what we wanted. Um, maybe it is. Uh, but we have options to control how we pull it in. So pulling from that same range, again, with data frame, just now additionally in options, we're passing index equals false. That means assume that the data in Excel does not have an index column on it. Um, you can go ahead and just automatically make the index be this 0, 1, 2 auto incrementing thing. And when we do that, then we see that something and else come as the columns and 10 and none come as the values for those. Um, and we can also pass um, header equals false so that these, uh, the first uh, values which are there are going to come into the data frame rather than as columns of the data frame. Um, so now it auto named the column as zero and we have something else as values, though something in 10 did come back over to the index because we didn't include index equals false. So if we include both of those, then we see the index is auto 01, the columns are auto 01, and we have those four values as cells of the data frame. So which you pick in between these is just going to depend on how you have your data in Excel. If it has headers, um, then you would want to leave it as it is. If it doesn't have headers, you would want to pass header equals false. Um, and generally, you're going to want to pass index equals false unless you want to have your leftmost values as the index of the data frame, and then you can exclude that. So um, then we can look at writing multiple values. So um, here, if we just take a single value and we assign it across a range here, D1 to D2, we're going to see that that same value comes into each one of the cells in that range. Um, and then, uh, so A5 to B5, A5 to B5, that's here. Uh, we want to put the 10 and 11 to there. Um, so same size range, one dimensional, it's going to be able to put those values there. Um, and then if you did a vertical range, uh, that would work as well. So we can go A7 to A8, and that should, uh, oh, that does, it does always go horizontally. Um, you cannot just write vertically like that. Um, if you want to write vertically, what you have to do is go to this list of lists pattern and put each of these values 
and less. Um, so then uh, we can see that the values come vertically. Um, and as a um, one-liner for that, uh, just double checking, we don't have that later in here. Uh, nope, so a one-liner for that. Uh, if you already have your 10 and 11 list and you want to put it vertically starting at uh, A10, uh, so my list is uh, 10, 12, uh, then you can use a list comprehension to convert it into that structure. Um, so you're just taking each element of the list and wrapping it into a list. And then we should see from A10 down to A11 that these numbers then come there. Uh, so you can use this pattern if you want to output vertically. Um, and then to output to an entire two-dimensional range, then we do this list of list patterns. So here, going from A7 to B8. Um, and you'll notice also that whatever's there, it's going to overwrite it as well. Um, so now we have this 12, 13, 14, 15, 12 and 13 in the first row, 14 and 15 in the second row in that A7 to B8 range. So then um, we can read entire rows or columns um, using the expand functionality in Excel Wings. So um, expand, it can if you don't pass anything, it automatically goes down and right, but you can also pass right or down to just go in that direction. Um, so starting from this A7, if we expand to the right, then we're going to get the 12 and the 13 because it started from here and expanded right to get both of those. Uh, but if we target the same cell but expand down, then we're going to get 12 and 14 because it's going to start from here and expand down. And if you don't pass anything into expand, then it's going to get all of this um, with the lists of lists kind of data structure. But you can combine expand with options. Um, and that lets us put this um, two dimensional data into a data frame. So using the same stuff we learned from the above section, we're making that a data frame, excluding the index, excluding the header. Uh, and we can see that we get uh, the 12, 13, 14, 15 with the auto incrementing columns and uh, index. So we can take an entire table from Python. We can take a Python data frame um, and we can write that into Excel as well. It just directly works. Uh, here, I already have something in A10 I didn't need to de delete it out, but just so it's clear, um, I'm going to write into A10 there with data frame, um, and we can see that all of that comes in there. Now you will notice, you know, just like when we're reading into a data frame from Excel, um, that there are options around the index and the header, um, because by default it's going to put the index and the columns there. So we said start from A10, we want to output this 16, 17, 18, 19, but it also took this zero and one uh, index and column names and brought them in here as well. Um, so now we're going to try here at A14, and if we exclude the index and the header, assign that data frame again, uh, now it's just going to take those values from the data frame rather than including the um, index and column names. So um, there's an important gotcha when you want to work with integers uh, and pulling them from Excel into Python. And most of the time in Python, we don't really care whether it's an integer or a floating point number. But in certain cases, such as when we want to do a number of loops, we do care whether it's an integer or a floating point number. So um, we're going to pull in from F5. So F5 is this 5 here. And we're going to um, pull in the value from there as our number of loops variable. 
And you can see it's just a plain five. There's no decimals on it or anything here. But we can see when it came into uh, Python that we got 5.0. And we look at the type, it is indeed a float, not an integer. And so that means if you just take that and you just try and loop with it, that we're going to get this error, float object cannot be interpreted as an integer. Um, so what we have to do is convert that into an integer before we can loop over it. So we just wrap that num loops in an int, and then um, now it's an integer, and so we can do our loops and everything on it. Um, there are also some gotchas around formatting in Excel when you try and read that back into Python. Um, so here, let's look at the F1 value. It's formatted as currency in Excel. Uh, let's pull that into Python. You can see it comes in as decimal 10.25. And if you just try and add a number to this decimal, we're going to get unsupported operand type uh, decimal and float. Um, so what we can do, same thing as we did with the integers, you just convert it. Uh, so just convert that to a float, and then we can do the math with it just fine. Um, and then F3, there we have the accounting formatting. It's going to be the same thing, but if you just take the float of that, uh, you're going to be able to get the number back from the decimal. Um, and... Uh, percentages do thankfully just work out of the box just fine. It pulls it in as a float um, in the correct format. Um, and then if you have a date, it's going to pull it as the date time type in Python. So that's a built-in type that we haven't talked about in the course. Um, but this is a standard way to work with dates in Python. And it works perfectly fine with Pandas as well. So the last thing that we're going to look at here um, is recalculating the workbook. So um, typically, you're not going to need to do this um, because when you um, write an input into Excel, um, it's going to recalculate the workbook automatically. Um, so let me just write a value here, um, A2, let's make that 11. You can see that the random value over here recalculated when I did that. I'm just running this Python code over here, and you can see the Excel workbook recalculating over there. So anytime that you write something into Excel, it's going to recalculate. Um, and so you don't normally need to explicitly recalculate. Um, the only time where you're going to need to do that is if you want to keep rerunning the Excel model when you're not changing any inputs. Um, and the case where that generally applies is when you have internal randomness in your Excel model, such that each time you run the Excel model with the same inputs, you're getting a different output each time. So in that case, you might want to have your Python code do a loop where it uh, you know, recalculates the workbook and then extracts the output from Excel and saves that in the list and then recalculates the workbook, extracts it from Excel, saves it in the list and does that for some number of iterations. So how can we do this recalculation? So um, we do have to work with the app object instead of the book or sheet object. Um, so this one liner here can get us access to the current uh, application object, Excel app. And then on that, you can do app.api.recalculate full. And you notice when I run that, that the random value in the Excel sheet keeps recalculating. Um, and um, you might try this on your machine and find it doesn't work. Um, and that's because the uh, API is actually slightly different on um, X, on uh, Mac versus Windows. So this uh, command should work on Mac while this one works on Windows. So in case you need to do this in your model, um, I included a convenience function for you. 
uh, recalculate workbook, you can just copy this function into your model um, and you just call recalculate workbook and you see I call that it is recalculating. And what this does is it, it gets the app, Excel Wings app, um, and then it's going to check what operating system you're on. If you're on Windows, it's going to call that first calculate full. If you're on Mac, it's going to call that just calculate. And otherwise, it's it's going to raise an error if it can't properly detect your operating system. Um, so you can just take this into your model and use it should you need to recalculate uh, your model because it's an internal randomness Excel model that you're trying to run repeatedly from Python. That covers how to integrate uh, Python and Excel using Excel Wings. Uh, and there is a lab exercise, multiple lab exercises on this material as well. So there are uh, actually four lab exercises here, the different levels. Um, and the fourth one is optional. One, two, and three are what's required to submit for the course. And number one here, and with all the exercises, you're going to download this uh, Excel Wings lab file from the course site or from the uh, resources slide here. This directly will let you download it. Um, and the first exercise is to read uh, the values in the workbook or in the worksheet from column A and then write them into column B using Python and Excel Wings. The second exercise is to get the value from C9 and multiply it by 2.5 in Python and show the result. And the third exercise is to read this table into Python, do some math on it, and output it back into Excel, and make sure that you can uh, match up the index and the header to the same format as the original table. So that covers uh, everything we're going to look at in the course with combining Excel and Python. And this also concludes all the material um, that you would need, uh, that everyone should need for every possible variation of the Project 2 model. So thanks for listening, and see you next time.